end of the year. Thank you guys so much for sticking around with me through 2019. It has been an amazing year and I would love to look back and see what's happened on the channel and what we have planned for 2020. But before we do that, I would like to mention that SNG4 is taking a short three week break in January. We'll be back to our weekly schedule on Saturday 18th of January 2020. Please let everyone know guys, if I see someone ask where's SNG4, I'll send Mario to their house. Mario's gonna do something very illegal. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's focus on the adventures we had in 2019. We went from cooking shows to prison breaks to anime taking over the world to Area 51 to the release of our own series Meta Runner. I love how the first ever video of 2019 was just a sh post where Mario goes to buy milk and surprisingly, it's one of our most viewed videos this year. You know what, I'm not even mad. We're gonna see if we can beat that stupidity in 2020. A lot of the videos on SMG4 are made by Kevin and I just sitting quietly in a room and asking what if questions. That's how stupid crap like this gets made. Oh, here's a question. Ever tried editing a video in the back of a moving van? Well, I had to do that for the Big Chungus episode when I was up in America in January. We had the SMG4 Tour Ultimate where Kevin and I traveled along the east coast of America and did 9 live shows for fans where I had to edit a video live. Under 30 minutes! It was tons of fun but also very, very stressful. My favorite part of touring is just meeting you guys. Many people come up to me and say how SMG4 has gotten them through hard times or just giving them a good old laugh and it warms my heart every time. What was not fun was the pain and headaches I had to endure from trying to edit while in the back of a van or traveling all over America. It helped Kevin and I learn a lot about the culture. Things like every five steps you take, there's always a food joint nearby. They're everywhere and there's so much driving. America, please have everything just closer together. Thank you. And Texas, I must say, you have pretty damn good barbecue. We salute you. Oh yeah, and we were able to meet Mario at the Nintendo New York store. Shout out to all my friends at SMG4. It's -a me, Mario. That was crazy. But more so, celebrating New Year's in the New York Times Square. Though I'm sad that I missed out on Ninja's Fortnite dancing during that event. I want to see some movement. I'm not seeing enough movement. Anyway, reeling back to SMG4, I'd say the main course for this year had to be the anime arc. Probably one of the most emotionally impacting and convoluted arc we've made to date on SMG4. And if you haven't watched it yet, please do. You will not regret watching it. We're about to get into heavy spoilers. Now let me tell you the funny story of how the anime arc came to be. So the original, original story was completely different. You see, Kevin likes watching a lot of crime related Netflix shows, so he had this brilliant idea. What if we did the crime boss trope, but with Bukens and anime? You heard that right. Bukens was originally meant to be the main character of this arc. The plot would be, anime would be banned from the Mushroom Kingdom, and Bukens ended up becoming a kingpin and attempted to smuggle anime into the kingdom, and he would eventually start his own company called Boopco. We even made a logo for it. Of course, you can see that storyline in the existing story arc in the episode Mario's Illegal Operation. The only problem with doing that as a full arc is that we felt there was not enough substance. It just felt that it was too short to be an arc, but as an episode alone, it was a great idea. So we went back to the drawing board. Now on the other hand, we also wanted to do a Splatfest story arc involving Meggy, where Meggy would do the Splatfest like normal, but have something attack her in the middle of the competition. I think you guys are starting to see some stuff, you know, come together here. We wanted like an anti-inkling slash alien species that would stop the competition, then like kidnap the inklings for some reason. I don't know how, but we ended up considering like a little shark species that would catch the inklings and like cook them and they wore little chef hats. Yeah. We wanted to introduce a whole new species and like a new location with this, but Kevin and I realized this was way too much work for us. It would take a lot of time and resources to create something like this, and we were already focusing on Meta Runner at the time. So we reeled it back to one antagonist. Guess who it was meant to be? Axel, baby. That's right, Axel was envisioned as the antagonist of this arc. He was meant to disrupt the Splatfest and kidnap a lot of Inklings, but there was only one problem. We couldn't figure out a motive, nor how a single guy could pull that off. It was a problem that puzzled us for the longest time. Now, Kevin and I usually go on these long walks together at night, whenever we have trouble thinking of ideas. You see, when you work on SMG4, you need to constantly be creative and have ideas, like all the time. Video ideas, meta runner plots, story arcs, new characters, that's a lot. So we made it a habit to do these two to three hour walks. It's real nice bonding time, you know? We drive to pretty much any random beach or harbor and just talk. It's really refreshing and I always look forward to these walks because we usually get KFC, boy! Okay, okay, sorry. Anyway, so we couldn't figure out a way for Axel to do a mass kidnapping by himself. So during one of these walks, Kevin just randomly just blurted out, you know, what if anime just took over everything? And I was like, what? 
Long story short, we followed that train of thought for some reason, and that's how we came up with Inkweaver, and the power to create anime characters. So now it was Axel, and his anime army that was to disrupt the Splatfest. Now the only issue with that is still, why kidnap Inklings? How would that help Axel? We then came up with the Inkling Ink, being useful for creating longer lasting forms of Inkweaver's creations. But it was just so much to explain. Which is why we came up with the outrageous idea to combine the Bukens arc I talked about earlier, with the Splatfest arc. Yep. Axel became a good guy so we could explain the whole importance of Inkling Ink, and a hero to remove the anime ban. And we made Francis bad because... Who the hell would like this guy? Look how punchable his face is. Then you know every other plot point sorta of just fell into place, and that's the creation of the arc, in a nutshell. It's sort of this weird amalgamation of two arc ideas we had into one, which is why they sort of felt like two chapters. Oh no! Nah, it's probably nothing. Let me tell you, I was really afraid of how the reception would go with Destiny's death. I kept thinking people would hate it, but you guys seem to be so moved by it, which is really great to hear. Man, I never felt so sad or against doing a scene than when I had to do that death scene. I felt horrible, more because I was going to have to make everyone else sad too. I kept yelling to Kevin, Kev, do I have to do this? Oh, Kev, do I have to do this? Do it. But in the end, it was a big step for SMG4, and I'm glad we were able to pull off something so emotional. Looking back at all that, we probably won't do such long arcs. 12 episodes did feel pretty long, and I know some people felt the same. We do plan on making shorter arcs or just longer videos that are more story-centered. What do you guys think? Please comment your opinions, they really do help. We were also very lucky to hit 3 million subs this year. The 3 million collab that we put together was amazing, and I want to thank all you guys for participating in that. And I've read that a lot of people have been asking for some more Seb Modnars, and I really want to do more of that, so I'm going to aim to do that in 2020 as well. We also released models of our characters this year to the Steam Workshop, and everyone has been using them in awesome posters, so I'm very happy that we did that. This year also marked where I'm beginning to do these story time videos. It's a neat way for me to connect with you guys, so I'm glad I'm starting to do these. And I know last year in 2018, people were sad that there was no recap video like this, so here we are! Now, Meta Runner, Kevin and I's passion project that has been worked on since late 2017. It dropped this year on the channel. It received great positive reviews from you guys and all of you have been yearning for more. We got into a few notable news articles too. Let me tell you, the development of the series was no easy task. I spent a lot of nights staying up until 3am just trying to get stuff done. And we still just made it to the finish line in the end. I want to thank my team at Glitch Productions who helped make the series possible. The team is constantly growing and it's all thanks to you guys, the audience, for enjoying MetaRunner. We also hosted our first MetaRunner booth this year as well. Kevin and I were able to meet fans, and trust me, it's this part of my job that I look forward to the most. Seeing you guys happy is all I need to keep SAG4 going. We also released official MetaRunner merch this year, like plush toys and Tari's hoodie, and all you guys have posted photos with them, and it's really pleasing to see. Outside of SMG4, Kevin and I went on a lot of overseas trips and met amazing people. Tony Hawk, Elijah Wood, Dan Avedan, and we saw Sakurai and Kojima at the Tokyo Game Show too! Except like a million feet away since they were presenting stuff. Uh, we went to E3 as well and met our friends over at Minus World. A group of other Nintendo YouTubers such as Nathaniel Bandy or Nintendo. We saved the world together, look at that! Now that was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and we had Panda Express with the odd ones out. That was cool, I guess. Going into 2020, I would like to return to weird experimental formats for SMG4. Stuff like the Mario Channel, or Mario Simulator, or Sonic the Derp Hog. Oh yeah, I always love surprising the audience with stupid random stuff like that and see how popular stuff can get. We have some big things planned too. Some major stuff will be happening on SMG4, so look forward to that. Season 2 of Meta Runner is also being worked on right now, it's coming along well. I wish I could show you some awesome stuff that we're planning, but Kevin will come and kick my ass if he finds out. So have this meme of Tari instead. Also a quick but important question. This year, we redesigned Maggie. So what do you guys think if we redesign characters like SMG4? Just so we don't have people looking like Mario all the time. And it wouldn't be too drastic. I see a lot of good fan art on the Amino and Demon art and all that. And I'm always thinking that it would be nice to make SMG4 look more unique. Please, please comment below. I'm really curious as to what you guys' thoughts are. We'll also be moving offices to a bigger place in 2020, so that's exciting. It's gonna be a great new chapter with plenty of more weird crap to come on SMG4. So guys, thanks for sticking with me and the channel this year. Here's to the next. And to cap things off, here's a happy little video compilation I made. Happy New Year's from me, Kevin, Glitch Productions, and the SMG4 cast. Me. Me. Da, 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 da. What?
Mario. Guys, I'm not gay. Oh. <laughs> I don't give me that look. <laughs> Daddy. What? What? Yes! Pizza time.